Hey y'all, so I decided to do this in the car. I'm actually um, sending giveaway prizes. If you don't know, I'm doing giveaways every month in this year. And um, I'm doing one each month on YouTube, Patreon, and for channel members. Um, and so I only have half of the addresses. And I've been waiting, so I just decided to go ahead and send them. And then if other people send me their address, then great. If they don't, um, I think after like four months, I'll just pick new winners and that way you know I'm not held up either because <laughs> I don't want to keep this stuff like in my possession I want to just give it away as I intended to but anyways I need to get into this video before it gets hot but uh my camera gets hot I should say it's cold <laughs> I don't want my camera to get hot but I was doing a live stream I think it was like last week and we were talking about how to revive the natural hair community and one of you lovely people was like but do we even need to revive the community and I thought that was such an interesting question that I wanted to bring it to you all, right? And I have lots of thoughts around this, right? Like so many videos have come out with influencers in the last year, I should say, saying I'm leaving the natural hair community, but then you have a lot of old heads coming back right now, which is also very, very interesting. And so my first reaction, like my, my initial reaction to that question was, whoa, no. Maybe we don't need to. And this is someone who does a lot of natural hair content because like, think about what the community started around. Like it started around struggle, right? And that was how we found community. I would argue whether or not it was a movement. Movements have like that has, that word has a meaning and I don't think we were there, but I do think we are a community of people, right? Like the puff. Can't nobody get puffs like black women. Puff with large earrings, hoop earrings. Like that's a thing. That's a black woman thing. Even getting your hair into a puff, right? A lot of people wouldn't know how to do that, especially mine's long. A lot of people wouldn't know how to do that. Um, I learned a lot from the online community starting back in 2004, right? So we started this around struggle. I don't think as a whole black women are struggling with their natural hair anymore. There are people who are struggling, don't get me wrong, but I think as a whole we know that we could turn to YouTube, find what we need, and keep it moving. So, like, if we're not congregating around struggle, which I don't really want us to, maybe you do, let me know, um, we congregated for a bit around products, right? There was a whole wave of everyone having every product in the world, influencers trying every new product. I think we're over that. I definitely think we're over that, and I consider that a beautiful thing. Um, I don't really want to contribute to capitalism in that way, and I don't know if I ever did on this channel. Uh, I think I did a little, but not a lot. Then there was the correct approach wars, <laughs> right? And those are still going around a little. Um, it kind of hit its head with the oils or butters thing, I think. And after that little foolishness, I think we were all like done for. My last car chat was about that. <laughs> and that lives in infamy, right? Um, but then people still correct people when it comes to how they're doing their twist outs, how they're doing their wash and goes. Like the wars about what is correct and what is not correct. And then we finally settled on the realization that like what you do to your hair is what you do to your hair, right? So if we're not ganging up or <laughs> gathering around that, I think right now we're gathering around outrage, which I don't know if that's healthy, right? Like people are jumping only on the content if someone has um, experienced a setback or someone's calling someone out, not in. And I don't think that's good. So I don't want to continue like that legacy. I don't want our community to get together around that concept, that idea. I think for just a slight moment in there, it was about empowerment. And maybe we can congregate around that again. Maybe the natural hair community has, you know, naturally given way to, you know, the commentary. Like Julesy, her channel has naturally given a, uh, given way to social justice, right, um, issues. And, and there, there are always the wars about type 4 hair versus type 3 hair, mixed women in the mix as well. And a lot of, like, bigotry and things came out of that. Right. And I don't think we've loosened those um, ideas. I don't think we made much progress in that area. So maybe as a community, that's where we need to go. But like one thing that someone talked about in one of my more recent videos in the comments, they commented the beauty shop is a place of community. And I think that's why we feel that like hair is a natural space for community. But I would not say like my gut reaction to that was hell no. The beauty shop is not a place of community anymore. Um, it may have been at one time. In my childhood, I think it was, where, when women used to come and sit in the beauty shop for hours, right? But now, no. When I go to the beauty shop or the beauty salon, 
it's just me in that chair. Sometimes I go when my sister's getting her hair done and we talk because we have the same hairstylist um, with a hairstylist and that's a moment. But like, how many of y'all are going to a beauty salon with a bunch of other women and talking to a bunch of other women about hair, about community, about like what our struggles? Like, tell me, do you find community at the beauty shop? I would say no, like largely and no. Like, People are trying to go in, get their hair done, leave. People <laughs> are still trying to find good hairstylists, right? Recently did a video on hairstylists versus everyone, so I'm not going to reiterate that stuff. I'll just link it below, um, and maybe I'll make that the end card. But do we find community at the beauty shop? To me, that like stems and, and goes again into the product issue, right? Like businesses. That's where I think of beauty shops as businesses, black-owned businesses, don't invest in our community. There was a time when we were segregated and there as a community, there was this understanding that we would shop black, we would buy black. And then those businesses um, kind of once again invested in the community. There was social pressure to do so, but there was an understanding as a community that that was the responsibility, right? And I don't know if beauty shops have this responsibility, but I do think these product companies we should hold them to that standard, right? I think. We are investing lots and lots of money into these natural hair um, product brands. Like, so much money goes into the beauty industry from us, black women, right? Um, we influence a lot of the products that happen on the market, the changes, right? We influence it heavily, but we as a community are not seeing those dollars. It's one of the reasons influencers have backed away, right, from these product companies. Because influencers have put a lot of companies on. Tell me if you disagree in the comments. I will challenge you, let me tell you. But influencers have put a lot of companies on the map from the beginning. There was a synergy there. I do remember when the main choice, um, the owner of that company, that brand, before she merged and, uh, and made her life coins, shouts out, like, that's the point of business. Um... She used to give back every week to people, like directly. She used to hold contests. She would pay people's bills, etc. Like that's the kind of company that I want to support. In the absence of that, all I can do is invest black dollars and know that like I'm investing in my community, even though I'm not going to see it back, right? I just have to see that as a value that I hold, investing in my community. But like I really do think that brands should be held to a higher standard. Just think about the makeup girlies and the perfume girlies and the fashion girlies. Like the non-black companies do bring these women out to events, right? When they're launching product parties and things, launching, not parties, launching products. Um, they give free products to these women. They collaborate with these women. They pay these women a lot of money. These, I, I'll tell you, these black hair companies don't do all that. Some of them do do events. But it's not a regular part of their marketing strategy. They know that we as black influencers will use their product, share their product, because that's what our audience wants. And that's just the price we pay. We more than likely will not see a return on that investment, especially if you're in the type 4 spectrum. And I'm going to come back to like the type 4 spectrum in a moment, but I don't want to stray from this topic. I do take exception to the fact that we are barreling into a recession. Like the Silicon Valley Bank shutting down is really an indication that things might get worse than, you know, they're telling us, right? Um, and I don't see where black people can rely on anyone to help us as a community, right? These black businesses that we just insist on investing in, and I don't think we should stop, right? I, I, like I say, that's a value of mine. We cannot count on these black businesses to give us money back, to invest in our community. We as a whole cannot do that. The black dollar, like black people getting wealthy does not help us, does not save us as a whole. And having these aspirations of becoming wealthy, a lot of the times just people take advantage of that in our community and it be our own people. Let's <laughs> like Atlanta right now where I live is fighting real hard against Cop City. And who is pushing Cop City? Black politicians. It's not, it's not us, the citizens. We have voted for these people in under the guise that they are going to stop this from happening, but they are the main proponents of it, right? And it's the same with business, any business, right? In a capitalist society, business, people going to business to make money, ideally they sell the company and they get wealthy, not with the idea that they're going to help us out, right? That is not the idea. And, 
you know, I'd love to say that investing in black dollars will help our community. I just, I don't see that happening. I haven't seen it for many years. I will continue to invest in black people and black business. There's no better place for me to put my money, right? Um, but if we could figure out a way to hold these businesses accountable, I would love to do that, right? Because they are making money. They're making a lot of money. I don't want to hear anybody tell me they can't give back because they can. They may not be making as much money as their white counterparts, but they're making enough to give back. And so like, what's the benefit for us investing so much money and time as influencers into black companies and and like solely black companies you'll notice a lot of influencers aren't doing that anymore and that brings it back to like community right like where are we finding community right a am i am i joining with you all as a community to teach women how to do their their hair we've done that am i sharing the best product done that do it all the time you ask me i got products i got videos about products I got demonstrations of various ways you could use these products and so do most influencers. What's the benefit in becoming a community? Now, let me go in this post office and I'll finish. I want to talk about representation. I think it's a huge thing here. So that just leaves us with representation, right? I thought I told you I'd get back here. The natural community was plagued and is still plagued by the same issues that we have as a society of black folk. We are color struck and texturism is a problem. People still associate the color of your skin with the texture of your hair, right? People still cannot reconcile people who are of mixed descent into our culture as a whole, especially hair-wise. And hair companies are some of the ones that are most guilty of texture discrimination, right? The 4C girlies, the 4B girlies weren't getting the deals. They, We weren't seeing the representation on their advertising from companies owned by black folk because they believe that we as a people will not buy as much product because what YouTube has shown the big social experiment is that people with type 4 BC hair may say that they want the representation but what's the channels that they subscribe to right what are the biggest channels on YouTube the girlies with the curly hair right the girlies with the looser textures the three B's and the four A's right those people have the most subscribers. The businesses follow suit, right? They say people will buy more product if we feature a 3C girly. Uh, if we feature a 4C girly, they won't buy as much product. So let's just not do that, right? There is not a lot of advertising that shows the full gamut of what it is to be a black woman with natural hair in this community. That failed in every way, shape and form. We as a community did not hold these brands accountable to that. And we as a people, obviously where our dollars go tells brands what we want to see, what we will buy product from. And reviving the community with those same problems is not going to make this space any better. I think those problems are solved outside of the hair community. And like YouTube is just a mirror of our community. The black women empowerment space just takes shots all the time at feminism right which is how we got here right black feminism was just different than white feminism is how we got here right <laughs> I wouldn't say the black women empowerment space on YouTube reflects most black women and the femininity, femininity content like a lot of that is toxic as well whether you agree with me or not what is clear is that we are not coming together as a community uh, through natural hair, through the beauty space, through relationships, etc. More than anything, we're just fighting. But we have, as a community, have been fighting over these things for many years. It was a fight in the 70s that's still going on today. So really what this comes down to is if we are going to revive the natural hair community, I need y'all to tell me what we're going to revive it around. What I found more effective in encouraging women in my community is just living my life and showing people how I'm doing it. And I'm finding that to be much more effective. So that's why the direction of my channel has moved towards just showing my life, telling you guys how I do things, providing value in every video along those lines of how me as a single black woman is thriving and how you can do. I don't show relationships. I don't show men and stuff because the way I relate to somebody ain't gonna be the way you relate to somebody. But I feel like that's another video.